hello. We're going to be reading Hell Followed With Us, chapter 2 today, and this book is by Andrew Joseph White. What do angels believe? As true believers, our priority is to serve the Lord. We know salvation comes in service to God, in carrying out his final command. We call ourselves angels to proclaim our truth in servitude. And that is from the Angelic Movement official website. It's time to come home. Brother Hutch holds his hand out to me. The hand that clasps moms in prayer. The hand that pulled the trigger on dad. Home means going back to New Nazareth. Back to Theo. Back to mom. Every angel in New Nazareth would fall to their knees and beg for my blessings. Theo will take me back as his betrothed, like he didn't spit at me and call me a lying ungrateful bitch. Mom will kiss my cheeks pretending she doesn't notice my boy's clothes and short hair, and then she'll slam me in an isolation cell until the flood turns me into a monster, into seraph, into a six-winged beast burning with holy fire, leading graces in the flood to war, carving a path to heaven through the bodies of non-believers. I don't take his hand. I don't want to go home. My stomach seizes and I vomit out onto the road. It's yellow, red, and black sour and hot all the way up to my throat and round me click click clack a choir of safety is coming off but the angels won't shoot they won't kill me imagine what the faithful would do it to the soldier that did he'd be crucified he'd be cut open and he would die watching maggots squirming in his intestines hey brother hutch snaps at the soldiers stand down now i heave again nothing comes up except acid Brother Hutch hums softly, and it's such a kind sound, it's terrifying. There we go, he murmurs. He rubs circles into between my shoulders. It's okay. My words come out in an unsteady wheeze, bubbling with saliva. Don't touch me. All right, Brother Hutch says. I understand. I heard what your father called you. Ben, was it? I'll call you Ben if that's what you want. Your mom is worried about you, Ben. She wants to make sure you come home. Mom's not worried about me. She's worried about salvation. I say, rotten hell. And that doesn't. Brother Hutch snarls and hauls me up. Not enough to stand or even get onto my knees. Just enough for him to look me in the eyes. His bloodshot, beady eyes. How about a deal? He says. I try to pull back, but he holds onto me tight. I'll give you a choice. You can come with us the easy way. Or we can take you by force. You can come to your senses, or I can break your legs. He's smiling. It makes his face shine in the ugliest way. A mask can never hide that. It's up to you. How do you want to do this? There's something on his cheekbone. A splatter, strangely soft and pink. A little piece of meat. A little piece of dad. I spit on his face. Brother Hutch howls, watery, blood rot, saliva mixed with my own putrefying insides drips into his eyes before I can wipe it away, and I'm backhanded so hard my vision explodes with sparks. My hearing dissolves into a high-pitched squeal. I barely catch myself before my head hits the road. It's not contagious, a bridge guard says, yanking Brother Hutch's hands away from his face. It isn't contagious, brother. Sister Kipling said, I'm kicked on my back. Hot asphalt burns through my shirt. Loose gravel digs in my shoulder blades. The heel of a boot pins me to the road and grinds into my stomach like it's trying to snuff out a cigarette butt. I know the man standing on me. The scar across his nose. His small eyes, the wrinkles digging into his forehead. Steve, I whisper, as if using his actual name instead of Brother Collins will make out one of the Lord's holy murderers any kinder. Stephen, it's me. You know me. We met when I was 11, and he was 21, because we came to New Nazareth around the same time. I remember when he got his death squad wings, wings carved into his back, feathers from his shoulders to right where his ribs end. Theo stared at the raw tattoos the way little boys look at soldiers coming home from war. I stare at them the way little girls look at one of their uncles. Their sisters tell them to stay away from Stephen lets up, just a bit, and I think it might have worked, but he's wrestling me up and pinning my head against his chest. His 
He smells so much like sweat, I can almost taste it. A flick, and there's a knife to my throat. A thick one, with a black blade, glinting in the sun. You want to be a boy so bad, Stephen says. I think we can start cutting this shit off. That's how it works, right? I can't get the word out. I shake my head no. That's what I thought. So be a good girl and do what he says. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm so sorry. I say, okay. Brother Hutch picks up the Bible from the bridge checkpoint as Stephen gets me into a seat of whites and hooks a mask around my ears. A flimsy fabric mask worn only by people beyond the walls of New Nazareth, where we step beyond the gods' protection. Whore, Stephen whispers, glaring at my bulky denim, denim shorts before they're smothered by robes. The bridge guards take their place behind the jersey barriers, waiting for non-believers to string up and angel messengers from distant camps to let through. The soldiers, by the grace, gently hoax it from behind the cars and virus and melted body. Its virus melted body shivers in the human breeze coming off the water. Lord, Brother Hutch cries, raising his free hand as if reaching the body swinging overhead. Everyone joins him but me. Lord, how I praise you, how great you are in your never-ending mercifulness to bring our blessed seraph back to us. I will be good, I will be good, I will be good. I will keep the seraph hidden, locked up in my chest, whatever it takes to make sure the angels never get the weapon they made of me. But I'm just so tired of running. The death squad takes me back away from the bridge, away from Acres Field Country, and leads me through the streets of Ashton, New York, I mean, <laughs> New Nazareth. I ask if I can clean myself, but they refuse, so Dad's blood is still on my face hair and hands get off i smooth on my sleeves but it's settled into the lines of my fingers and the creases of my palms i want to stick my hands in boiling water get off get off get off stephen grabs my shoulders and shakes me shut the fuck up i wince that sort of language would never be allowed inside the new nazareth walls not even if you don't say it out loud mom said god would know anyway Besides the soldiers and the grace dragging itself along with us, the only thing we see all morning are abandoned cars and empty buildings. The world is only two years gone, so everything is almost exactly how it used to be. Clusters of stickers clinging to bus shelters, weeds springing up between cracks in the sidewalk, trees outgrowing their dirt squares in the concrete. A corpse hangs from a flagpole. In massive letters on the building behind it scream, Repent, sinner. That's the way it works now. Everyone is dying, and it's just a matter of what kills you. Whether it's the angels, or the flood, or heart, or heat stroke, or good old sepsis. <laughs> For most of humanity, it was the flood. Theo's mom was martyred on Judgment Day, and he grieved her in the only way he was allowed, by learning everything. How the virus burned through billions, missionaries like his mom carrying it to every major city in the world. How it either kills you when a new set of ribs grow through your lungs, or how an unlucky few survive long enough to find salvation as a grace. How the death squads find them and infect themselves with the taste of the flood for their initiation ritual, walking the fine line between taking a step closer to God and succumbing to the sickness. Seraph is a balance of the flood's need to devour and its need to survive, ravenous enough to turn me into a monster, but patient enough and to do it right, because Sister Kipling made the flood powerful, and she made the Seraph perfect. She made me perfect. The grace rumbles, shaking like a horse twitching the life lines. I come up to its hunched over chest, maybe, when its mouth is closed. I can see remnants of a person, people, it used to be, human teeth between serrated fangs, the remains of a button nose. Brother Hutch catches me staring. I avert my eyes, but it's not enough. He slows down to match my stride. In front of us, two soldiers peer at a map, murmuring about previous ambushes and the new paths through the city. Ashton has been devouring angels lately. 
Isn't it amazing? Brother Hutch coons, spreading his fingers towards the grace. The new life they've been given. How merciful of our Lord to allow them to be born again, to become warriors in our fight for his plan. Just like you. Just like me. This is what I was chosen for. For the virus to turn me into a monster that will lead the angels to heaven. That will wipe humanity from earth once and for all. Just like God demanded. A little after noon, the youngest of the squad calls for a rest. We're on a wide street lined with restaurants and hipster offices, sporting strange logos. Some were abandoned long before Judgment Day, thanks to the skyrocketing inflation, rent prices, and everything, really. Water conservation flyers and open calls for protest. Peel off brick walls next to eviction notices and going on a business signs. I haven't seen any bodies or angel propaganda for a few blocks. This must be a new path. I need a drink, the youngest soldier whines. I've been trying to place him the whole walk, but I keep coming up blank. Whose brother is he? Whose son? My feet hurt. Stephen shoves a water bottle against his chest. Then drink and stop complaining. I wouldn't take a break either if I were escorting my only sure shot at eternal life, but Brother Hutch says he's right. Stephen's eye twitches above his mask. There's no point in wearing ourselves down. We're about an hour from the Reformation. Reformation? He means Reformation Faith Evangelical Church. Memories of the place come rushing back and so does vomit in the back of my throat. I could have seen this coming. Reformation is halfway between the bridge and Nazareth, it's a perfect place to rest in this beast of the city. And if I walk into that building, I'm going to lose it. If I walk into any church ever again, sit, Brother Hutch says. Eat, rest, all of you. Thank God, says the youngest, who immediately slumps against the hood of a bullet-scarred sedan. The others roll their eyes at him. He's scrawny and strange. Not much older than me. Probably just graduated from training. His wings still aching, assigned to a squad that happened to get the most important task in the world. If he's as new as I think, I'm surprised somebody hasn't smacked him hard on the back of the head yet. Right where the tattoos are still painful. Theo used to complain about that all the time, back when he still had squad mates to complain about. Granted, I'm too big of a deal for that kind of roughhousing. If Theo hadn't been exiled from the test squads... That could be him right there, my betrothed, staring at me with a mask and a gun. One soldier points to the road. The grace folds itself up and sits, shuddering all the way down. There's enough gray matter still left in the heads of graces that they can be whipped into the following basic commands. Sit, stay, kill. Stephen doesn't give me dignity of following orders. He just forces me down to the curb. The other trade packages of food in their map, trying to pray over their meals and clustering in the shade. The rookie squabbles for the map and jerks it out of somebody's hand with a triumphant snort. I weave my bloody fingers together and press my lips to my knuckles like I'm praying to. If we're going to stop, I'm going to take advantage of it. There has to be a way out. If I can put some distance between me and the angels, any distance, I can lose them again. There's an old cafe behind us, and the glass door is shattered, revealing a path through a seating area with little chic tables, right to the back door labeled emergency exit. If I distract them long enough, I could do it. By the sedan, the rookie says, we're really close to where the salvation disappeared. Everyone stops. My knees settles like a fog. I heard something about that a while ago. Squad Salvation went out to sweep a possible camp of non-believers in that last month, and never came back. Mom held a service on the chapel lawn for them, lifting her hands to help them from their destined place. Help them to their destined place. Thank Jesus. The gift of eternal life, now in heaven forever. Not a funeral, though. Angels never hold funerals. Brother Hutch takes the map. We shouldn't be, he says. We're nowhere near the northeastern quarter. We should be fine. We should... The gray shuffles. We are, Brother Hutch says, aren't we?
another soldier crowds in. I thought we were taking the long way around. I thought we were too, Brother Hutch says. Then we got turned around by the courthouse. Crack! A wound blossoms across Stephen's throat, like someone aimed for the center mass and blotched it, tearing his neck into a mess of meat and severed arteries. He stays upright for a second, gurgling before he falls. We walked right into an ambush. The grace screams loud and high and long. It clatters on its feet and its mouth opens into a hole of teeth and spit, swinging around the office building across the street. I jam myself against the sedan for cover. Brother Hutch slides into his place next to me, cradling his rifle into his chest. Crack! The rookie stumbles in silence, eyes bugging. Crack! He's dead. The angels scatter. Some jump through the broken windows of the storefront next door. Some duck behind the pickup parked in front of the sedan. Stephen's body stares at me. Mouth open, a halo of blood spreading across his head. Where are they? Brother Hutch snaps. There! Someone shouts back, pointing over the top of the office building. Up there, backlit by the sun, a smudge of black, and it's gone. Brother Sedan. <laughs> Brother Hutch pulls me down and hisses. Stay. Brother Hutch shatters. It's not a clean shot. The bullet nicks his eye and takes out a piece of his skull. Blowing it open, I jerk back, slamming against the curb. Brother Hutch is gone. The man who watched each with a gentle smile while Mom cleaned my scraped knee. The man who congratulated Theo and me on her betrothal and wished us a happy marriage through the Holy War. He's gone. His body sags. There are brains on the sedan. There are brains on me. Dad's shattered skull, his blood in my mouth. If they want their monster, make them suffer for it. I'm on my feet, away from the sedan, up the cafe stairs, through the shattered glass door. I tear the robes off and yank down the mask. I just have got to get back to the back door. I can lose them if I can make it, if I just... There's movement behind the coffee bar. A boy in a black... A boy in black points a rifle at my chest. And that is where we're going to leave off. That is the end of chapter two.